As the Internet of Routers, Servers and Personal Computers has been maturing, another Internet revolution is going on. The Internet of Things. The vision behind the Internet of Things is that embedded devices, also called smart objects, are universal become IP enabled and an integral part of the Internet. The scale of the Internet is estimated to be immense, with the potential of trillions of devices becoming IP enabled. The impact of the Internet of Things is and will be also more significant, with the promise of better environmental monitoring, energy savings, smart grids, more efficient factories, better logistics, better healthcare and smart homes. The IoT devices can directly talk to each other, creating a new communication that completely bypasses the traditional forms of communication such as telephone and internet. Security is the biggest concern in adopting Internet of Things technology. In particular, as the Internet of Things spreads widely, cyber attacks are likely to become increasingly physical rather than simple virtual threats. The current IoT space comes with numerous security vulnerabilities. These allow attackers to intercept data and to collect personal identifiable information. User credentials can be stolen at login or malware can be injected into newly updated firmware. IoT systems are typically controlled by event-driven smart apps that take an input either as sensor data, user inputs or other external triggers and commands one or more actuators towards providing different forms of automation. The growth of the market is allowing the prices of the devices to lower dramatically. The will to put new inventions in the market can lead to buggy software, untested products and more important, unsafe devices to flood the market. It's relatively easy to encounter buggy apps unforeseen bad apps interactions or device communication failures that can cause unsafe and dangerous physical states in the process available in the market. We are going to populate our homes, office and neighborhoods with dense networks of billions of tiny transmitters and receivers. And it should be clear to everyone there are several pros in the IoT growth, but there are also some aspects that should be improved for completely feeling safe and secure in this almost new world. The paper describes a new type of thread in which adjacent IoT devices infect each other with a worm that spreads explosively over large areas in a kind of nuclear chain reaction. The worm spreads by jumping directly from one Philips Hue light to its neighbors, using only their built-in wireless connectivity and their physical proximity. The attacker can infect a single bulb anywhere in the city and then the infection will catastrophically spread everywhere within minutes, enabling the attacker to turn all the city lights on or off, or permanently break them. Each infected lamp is a new source of infection for its all adjacent lamps. The attacker only has to initiate the infection of a single lamp and then can retire and watch the whole city go black. It's the kind of attack that they can be defined as a really devastating low energy budget one. The attack does not use any internet communication and the infection directly spreads via physical proximity using only EEEE 802.15.4 communication. Consequently, it is very difficult to detect that an attack is taking place and to locate its source after the whole lighting system is disabled. Furthermore, because of the use of the physical proximity, it cannot be stopped by isolating the various subnetworks from each other. In this sense, the attack is similar to airborne biological infections, such as influenza, which spreads almost exclusively via physical proximity. In the hands of a real attacker, these kinds of strike could permanently break all the infected lamps by simply disabling their firmware update process. Such lamps cannot be rescued and have to be thrown away. Philips Hue Light System is the world-leading product in smart lighting. Launched in 2012, it's a family of products that can connect to each other communicating using IEEE 802.15.4 ZigBee protocol. This allows to create an ad hoc mesh networks of lamps, bulbs, light strips and others. The system works by having a U bridge that connects the personal area network to the internet, allowing the control of lights not only in the traditional way with the light switch, but also through the smartphone app and the most recent smart assistants like Siri, Alexa or Google Assistant. Even though there's no official number per part of Philips, Educated Guesses Online guesses that two years ago more than 10 million lights have already been sold. The provision states that the market will grow by $945 million each year until 2025. So, systems like this will be installed everywhere, being great targets for attacks. Philips Wu works with ZBill Lightlink, or ZLL, protocol, on top of 
IEEE 802.15.4. In the official website, we can find the advertisement security of ZZL protocol, claiming to use authentication to secures networks from neighboring networks, while allowing interoperability of products from different vendors. The basis for the ZLL TouchLink Commission protocol defined in ZLL standard. This protocol established PAN, personal area networks, to instruct and receive data from connected devices. The architecture of the system is like this. There is a PAN coordinator, a device responsible for managing the network and that is connected to the internet. This sends messages with commands and target devices. The message is broadcasted and each device checks if the message is for him and if it's not, it will rebroadcast the message again. To avoid implosion, the message has a temporal max time attached to it. By doing this, each lamp uses other lamps in the system to communicate, improving the range of the system. The problem with this protocol is that the message uses a single encryptation key for all the communications and that key has been leaked in 2015. So, how to connect new lamps? To connect new lamps to the system, the bridge sends a joint network request. This is accepted by the lamps automatically, making the connection to the system. But, in order to make sure that only the owner of the lamps can control them, the lamp only accepts the request if the bridge is close to itself, less than 50 cm. The lamp does this measuring the Received Signal Strength Indication RSSI. In order to update the lamps, Philips uses Zigbee OTA over the air update system. The procedure describes itself as the main goal of over the air upgrade cluster is to provide an interoperable mean for devices from different manufacturers to upgrade each other using each other images. As it's going to be seen soon, bugs in these two functionalities allow the investigators to attack the system. The tech created is the first native and autonomously self-spreading Zigbee worm, targeting the Philips Hue light system. It is a combination of two attacks. One used to encrypt and verify firmware updates, allowing to encrypt, sign and upload malicious updates to infect light bulbs, and the other one which allows to take full control over lights from long distance without using custom hardware. It proceeds in the following way. A unicast reset to factory command is sent to the target Philips Hue light. Upon receiving the message, the light will undergo a new factory reset and start scamming for a new network by sending a Zigbee Beacon request message. Then, the attacker responds with a Zigbee Beacon message with the flag about permission set to true. This causes the light to start the Zigbee association process and join the attacker's network. This attack can run simultaneously and on all lights within the range and can be used in war driving and war flying scenarios. In the war driving scenario, the attackers install three Philips Hue lights in the office of the first floor of a building. Then, they successfully tested the attack while war driving the car at the far edge of the lawn. For the war flying scenario, the attackers install five Philips Hue lights on the third floor of a building. They mounted the attack kit on a DJ Inspire Pro drone with a power bank attached to the bottom of it, while the evaluating boards were hanging one meter below it. They started the attack on the ground at a distance of about 350 meters. Right after takeoff, at that distance, the factory reset part of the attack started working. As the drone got closer to the building, the takeover part was completely. To demonstrate the success takeover, they added a code that causes all the lights to repeatedly signal SOS in Morse code. This worm can also be used as a breaking attack, which is an irreversible one. Any effects caused by the worm, blackout, constant flickering, at and others will be permanent. Once the worm is downloaded, the worm can decide what OTS updates to allow and completely replace the firmware. As it was stated, the Zigbee Lightlink protocol and the radio ships on the labs have implemented more or less advanced secret mechanisms. So, how was it possible to conduct this attack? The attackers first develop a device that uses differential power analysis. This analyzes the power of the signal getting into the devices and try to uncover the bits that the processor is running. In this way, they uncover the way that the OTA update works and were able to create malicious software that looked like an official update. Then, they had to surpass the proximity check to allow them to send a command for the LAM to join their networks and receive the malicious packet. Analyzing the documentation of the Zigbee Lightning API, they discovered what we can call a beginner code. First, since Zigbee Lightlink allows different manufacturers to control the lamps, the lamps not only listen to the channel that makes the connection to the hub, 
but they are always listening to a channel to accept new connection from other devices. The attacker can send message to the lamps and they are going to be received. When that happens, the proximity check should verify if the sender is closer when it receives a joint network request and mitigate the offense in this way. What the attackers found out is that it's possible to put a joint request message inside of a regular control message. In this message, the proximity check is not done and the joint request is performed by the lamp. They had a way to get in the lamps now. By performing a factory reset to them, the lamp will search the network for a new update. Since the original app is not expecting this behavior, it will take some time to send the update. In the other hand, the attacker's hub is constantly sending the malicious software, so with a big chance, the lamp will get infected. Controlling one lamp is now possible to send factories to the, all the other lamps, because this network spreads information lamp by lamp. By saying that the target device is everybody, all the lamps in the network will perform a factory reset and receive the malicious update from the affected lamp. After the chain starts, the attacker can stop sending the commands, the infection will be spread by itself. The major problem here is that the lamps are only made to receive the updates over the air, and so, even if Philips or Zigbee releases an update to stop this attack, all new lamps will be infected. It's only possible to solve the problem while manufacturing the lamps. After they are in the market, an attack like this makes all the products permanently affected. So, at this point you are thinking, this is a real severe attack, but it's quite difficult that nowadays there's already sufficient devices for this kind of attack to spread long distance. Let's do the math. With the concept of critical mass, it's possible to analyze the diffusion of a message in a dense graph. A graph is a mathematical abstraction of a set of objects connected to each other, the Internet of Things. If we set D as the distance that N lamps are from each other, the theory of critical mass allows us to study if a broadcast message initiated by one of the lamps can reach all of the others. This is the percolation threshold. For a given circular area, the theory states if more lamps than this equation shows are inside of a circle of area A and all the lamps are at distance D apart, the message will be spread through all the circle. So, let's put a real example in the model. A circular city, mm, Paris, area 105 km squares. Distance, according to the Zigbee website, the range of the devices is 70 meters indoors and 400 meters outdoors. So, let's consider D equal to 100 meters. And the result is 50,000 lamps. Paris in 2016 had 2.2 million inhabitants and around 1.4 million houses. So that means that is only needed at 1 in each 94 houses to have at least 1 Philips Hue lamps to the infection to spread everywhere. IoT devices are becoming more and more common and affect larger parts of our life. The use of these devices is growing in all of the areas we can imagine. Consumer applications, medical and healthcare, transportation, building and home automation, manufacturing, agriculture and infrastructure applications. All these applications have the aim to improve our lives, our health and business. But all that glitter is not gold. The spreading of this new world is going too fast that a lot of aspects related mostly to security and safety have to be improved. The tech presented in this video might be alarming enough by itself. But this is only a small example of the large-scale problems that can be caused by the poor security offered in many IoT devices. The tech presented in this video might be alarming enough by itself, but this is only a small example of the large-scale problems that can be caused by the poor security offered in many IoT devices. Learnings sh should be taken from this example in order to show that good design practices for security protocols and the implementation of them is a must. We should work together to use the knowledge we gain to protect IoT devices in order to keep all the goods from IoT world and so to use the devices to improve our lives. We would like to add that this attack is real and that all the lamps manufactured before 2017 are affected by this problem. Because of this, the authors of the paper informed Philips and Zigbee about the vulnerability and the way to solve it. After this date, Philips started to manufacture the lamps with a new version of software that is not affected by this problem. <laughs> the lamp does this measuring the receival signal strength indication or RSSI RSSI -E.
on top is not a perineum finger. It's relative. It's relatively, relatively, oh, relatively, relatively. Yeah. It's relatively, no, relatively, relatively. It's relatively. Yeah. It's it's relatively. Yeah. It's it's relatively easy. Yeah. 